Hello everybody, my name is Zeke, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about some of the books I wanna read that I'm planning to read in the next month, maybe a little more than a month. We'll see how much reading I'm doing, how everything's panning out, but it is summer now, so I do have more time to read, so I'm, I'm pretty optimistic about the future. Now, usually when I kind of do these, it's very loose, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna end up reading, but now I actually have a stack of physical books, and when I have physical books, I feel like I'm much more inclined to actually pick them up than when it's just a library book that I can kind of forget about and pretend doesn't exist. So I am decently sure that I'm actually going to read all of these, like almost probably in order um, over the next month. I'm not going to talk about them in the order that I read them, but I'm probably not going to read any other books until I'm done with all of these, if that makes sense. So. That's kind of big for me, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Now, with all that being said, I still have to admit that the first book on this list is a digital book from the library, but it's kind of a special case, and that book is Assassin of Reality um, by, I'm forgetting the author's name right now, but it's, it's two authors, a uh, husband and wife duo. I will put it up on the screen so you can see it. But what happened with this book is it's the second book in this Dark Academia fantasy series, and I actually picked it up, I want to say like a month ago, honestly, at this point, and I got it from the library, I forgot I had gotten it from the library, and then I, I picked it up with like three days left in the loan, I was like, oh, I'll finish it, no problem, and then it was kind of slow, and I wasn't really getting through it, and so the library loan actually expired when I was only like a little more than halfway through it, unfortunately. So I was like, oh, I'll just get it again. Like this isn't a super popular book. And then I went to look and I was unable to get another copy from the library. So now I have to wait to get it again. So as soon as I get that, uh, as long as I'm not in the middle of something else, I'm definitely going to pick that up, finish it, even though it wasn't like my favorite while I was reading it. Still really want to finish it um, just because I was so excited for it before I picked it up and I don't really DNF and stop reading many books. So that's definitely number one on my list when I'm able to get it again. Now getting into the real, real stuff, I have seven books I'm gonna talk about. The first two are by the same author and that's Joan Didion. The first book is something I just picked up very recently and that's Where I Was From. I don't know a ton about this book other than it's nonfiction and it's about where Joan Didion was from. So I, I know it's a lot about California and I'm not sure exactly if this is separate essays, which a lot of her books are, or if this is one long continuous kind of work of writing. Uh, and I guess I'll see, I'm not going to look too much into it. I like to go into books knowing as little as possible. Uh, so I'm really excited to read this because I've been reading a lot of Joan Didion over the past like two years at this point, trying to space it out so I don't get through all of it. But I'm kind of feeling in the mood. I feel like summer is a really good time to read Joan Didion for me at least. So I'm kind of excited about this, especially because I recently read Slouching Towards Bethlehem by her, which took me way too long to get to because it's like her most popular book, but I finally actually got to it. And I really loved the story in there about like where she was from. There was one story in there about uh, where she was from and I would like to read more about that. And I'm sure this will be very different from that one story, but I'm still excited to read it. And I'm sure that I will end up at least liking this, if not loving it. Though I haven't heard a lot about it, so that does make me a little skeptical, but I'm still excited to read it. The other Joan Didion that I want to read is something I'm a little more excited about, and that's Democracy. Um, this is fiction, sorry, very reflective coding on this cover. Uh, I won't hold it up that much longer, but uh, this book I also don't know a ton about. I know we're following like some sort of politically um, important couple, I think, family maybe, and their lives throughout a campaign cycle potentially which is very different from anything i've ever read from joan didion so i'm very curious about that though what i really am excited about is i've heard that this is about kind of the intersection of the public and the private life which i think should be very interesting to read about especially because for me i think joan didion is so good at writing um really personal characters and so i'm really excited to see how like the relationship she builds in this play out and how she tackles that theme, if that is accurate, and actually what this ends up being about. But also, I read an interview, uh, an, a very an old interview. She's dead now, so I mean, it can't be a new interview. Um, where she talked about this actually being the work that she's most proud of that she's written, um, at least at the time of that interview. Which I was surprised at because I feel like I don't hear this book talked about a lot. It came out in the '80s. I feel like she's 
much more well known for her work in the 60s and 70s and I'm just excited to kind of see this because it seems like something a little different than anything else I've ever read and I hope that I end up enjoying it and either way I'm sure it'll be an experience to remember so very much looking forward to that. Next I picked up Italo Calvino's, ooh, what's it called? Cosme Comics. Don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, I think cover is beautiful. I've seen this painting artwork before, don't know what it's called, um, but very beautiful. Like this old edition, used edition. Um, also don't know a ton about this. I picked it up because I read Italo Calvino's If on a Winter's Night a Traveler back in like the spring or late winter. And I really loved it, a very unique style of writing, especially that book is very unique. It's it's basically a bunch of stories merged into one book and they build off each other and very experimental. And I'm excited to just pick something else up by him. And this seemed pretty short, which I just was kind of looking for. I don't know, I feel like a lot of the books, as you'll see that I'm gonna talk about are a little longer, especially I'm gonna get to one soon. Um, all I know about this is short stories that are somewhat like space themed um, and that's about it. So I'm sure there's much more to it than that and I'm sure I will find out much more as I read it. But very excited to see what else he can write because that book in particular that I read, If on a Winter's Night, A Traveler, is very experimental. So I'm kind of curious what his other books are like because they can't all be like that but, but I'm kind of curious how much of that is his like normal style, how much is just that book. And I just want to see what else he's written because I really did love that book so much. Continuing the running theme of books I know absolutely nothing about that I picked up is something that I actually know absolutely nothing about that I picked up uh, solely because it is a New York Review of Books um, edition, which I've recently become a little obsessed with and it's kind of bad because there's like over 600 of these and I'm definitely not collecting all 600 but now like when I see one I automatically kind of look into it see what the blurb is saying and this one seemed interesting um from the blurb on the back I know it is about kind of two women who get into some sort of like conflict with each other very unclear very vague um in this like winter town um I'm sure that from like that description on the back of the book, the atmosphere seemed like it was gonna play a role in the book. And also it seemed like the book was really gonna be focused on these two women and this conflict that builds between them. And I don't know, there was something about that description that really spoke to me. And also it being a New York Review of Books classic book, um, I couldn't really resist. Although I don't think this is actually old. I think it's just like a book um, that they put out. And so I'm excited to kind of see if I like this because it's really random. Also. It's a winter book that I'm gonna read in summer, which I do like to do sometimes. I think that um, it's kind of fun to read books that really feel like they should be read, read in different like seasons in different seasons. And so um, we'll see how this goes. Absolutely no expectations, but I hope obviously that I enjoy it. Okay, next is the very, very big book that I was talking about. And I might've sounded a little scared and I am definitely a little scared, but I'm also incredibly excited for this because uh, it's something I've been wanting to read a while, read for a while, and that's Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. Another shiny cover, very, very large, as you can see. How many pages? It's, we're past 600. There's at least 600 pages in this book. Um, actually, not as bad as I thought considering this, but still very long. I really want to read this because it's actually been a few years, at least two years now. Yeah, like two and a half years since I read Susanna Clarke's other book, a very, very small book called Piranesi and I think her only other published book she write she published them like 15 20 years apart um and that's very interesting too but I digress so Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell was published in 2004 I think so it's at this point 20 years old um and I don't know why I felt like sharing that but I did and I want to read this not only because I read Piranesi and gave it five stars and really enjoyed it and actually want to reread that at some point, although who knows if that's ever going to happen, but also because the premise of this sounds very interesting. It is about like these two magicians that kind of meet and um, some sort of grand 
relation weird relationship stuff happens there uh where they get into conflict and whatever and i'm sure i'll find out within the 600 pages what that actually means but i just think that the she's really good at like writing like magical stuff um very elegant way of saying that but i that's what i really loved about piranesi it felt very atmospheric and um very like whimsical in a way i don't think that's the best word but i'm hoping that this has some of that like similar feeling and also i really liked her writing in that book so i'm excited to actually finally get to this because i think ever since i've read piranesi i've been like oh i have to read this and two and a half years later i'm finally gonna force myself to actually do it uh so we'll see how that goes but i have high expectations that i hope go well because also i have not been reading a lot of big books recently which is crazy to me because all i used to read was like huge fantasy books and so i'm kind of excited to get more back into that now that it's summer and i actually have time so these last two books are actually rereads that one i'm actually gonna like force myself to sit down and reread and one we'll see if i get to it but i want to um and that the first one that i'm gonna force myself to reread is death in her hands by otessa moshfeg this was the first Otessa Moshfeg book I ever read. I read it before I like knew who Otessa Moshfeg is because I feel like she's such a like well-known figure in literary fiction. Um, she wrote My Year of Rest and Relaxation. That's her most popular book. Um, and I picked this up like not knowing any of like the lore behind her. And I really love this. I think it's probably one of my favorite things I've ever read from her. But at this point, it has been a long time since I read it. And so I want to reread it just for some context, because I guess this is something I can finally share because I actually know about it because I've read it. Um, in this book, we're following an old woman who basically, I think she discovers a note on the ground um, talking about some sort of murder, and then she like sets out to figure out what happened. As you can see, like I, it has been a while. I, I can't lie. I don't remember a lot about this, but I do remember what I really liked was exploring the mind of this main character because we're basically with her the entire time and having this very unique perspective that you don't really see a lot in fiction, or at least in the fiction that I read, or I still read. And so I'm excited to reread this, see if I still like it as much as I used to, and maybe set off more Otessa Moshfeg rereading. Because honestly, like the last, I read La Bona by her, that's the last book I read. Um, maybe I read something else after that, but that's what stuck with me is how much I really didn't love that book. And so I wanna remind myself of why I like Otessa Moshfeg um, the way that I usually do. Uh, so yeah, very excited to reread this, see how I feel, see if anything's changed, and I'll obviously let you know. And the other book I want to reread, I'm kind of putting aside, we'll see, but that's Play As It Lays by Joan Didion, the third Joan Didion book in this eight book discussion. Um, and this is, I'm saying is loose because I actually reread it in like September, October, so kind of semi-recently. And uh, I love it. I would say this is like top two favorite books of all time. And I don't know, I feel like Summer, as I said, really makes me want to read Joan Didion. And even though I just read this recently-ish, I kind of want to, I'm kind of feeling the urge to reread it again. And also it's kind of a quick read. It's, it's not light at all. Um, but I, I, when I was rereading it, like, I don't know, once I actually got into it, I read it really quickly. And so I feel like I should just like trust my gut and actually do the things I want so we'll see we'll we'll see if I get to it we'll see how I feel once I get through all these other books if I still really feel the urge to reread this I feel like rereading it for the second time I just got like even more out of it than the first time and so I want to see if that trend continues also I used to like never reread things and then this past year I reread this and one of my other favorite books Sula by Toni Morrison and it really worked for me both times uh, and so I really want to reread more and like when I originally set that goal I was like oh I'm gonna reread a bunch of different things and that's great and I should do that but also like I the whole point is that I should reread things that I enjoy and that I know I enjoy and that's kind of the point and so I kind of this is like the perfect example of that um I hesitate to call this a comfort book because it's not comforting but it just means a lot to me and so I think I might end up rereading it. That was a very long way of saying that, but yeah, maybe, we'll see. So those are the books I plan on reading soon in the next month or so. Uh, and obviously that there might be more books added in, but that those are definitely what I'm gonna try to focus most on and we'll see how they go. I'm expecting high things from a lot of them because a lot of them have either been on my radar for a long time or 
just sound very interesting. So we'll see how that goes and I'm very excited to finally have some more time to read, hopefully. And I will obviously, when I finally get through them, have some sort of wrap up where I talk about them. So we will be able to see how this actually goes. Um, but if you enjoyed this video, I thank you for watching and please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.